dear viewers warm welcome to the another special episode of channel i exclusive we have got two guests with us uh, this program one is mr dembo bazji high commissioner to india and bangladesh of republic of gambia and ambassador to union of myanmar and we have got mr m haider zaman he is the honorary consul of republic of gambia in bangladesh warm welcome to both of you thank you thank you uh, mr high commissioner please tell us about uh, your uh, just uh, you have been uh, designated uh, to bangladesh what is your feeling to be here as uh, high commissioner first of all i must once again express my profound thanks to the his excellency the president of bangladesh the government and the people of your country for the warm reception i have received since my arrival about 6 days ago mm -hmm. and uh, it's one of the greatest feelings to be accredited to a broader muslim country like bangladesh mm -hmm. i have been to many other countries as ambassador but the feeling is greater with me with that of bangladesh because we share a lot of affinities we are all members of the oic we belong to the same islamic umma mm -hmm. and uh, we have had very strong relations in the past which i am here to reestablish and strengthen the relations to a very high level to the extent that we will soon be seeing gambia bangladesh more intense interaction so really i'm very pleased to be here please tell us about uh, exact uh, goal we can achieve between bangladesh and gambia what is the special from your point of view to bangladesh what kind of business gambia can look at bangladesh well you know of top priority in the development agenda of the gambia is agriculture number 1 mm -hmm. and in terms of agriculture bangladesh is to be recognized and admired for the fact that in spite of the natural calamities in the asia region bangladesh is able to stand the test of time in terms of sufficient food production to take care of the population mm -hmm. so the expertise the experience the technology that you have in agriculture the gambia stands to relate to you so that we can benefit from such expertise and experience that will enable us to boost our agricultural production in the area of food security so this is very key element of my assignment to establish a very strong technical bilateral cooperation between the two countries in the field of agriculture that's priority number 1 priority number 2 that we aim to achieve with our relations with bangladesh is in the area of health 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 mm -hmm. we need from bangladesh your doctors and your nurses mm -hmm. to come and join hands how many of us. them can be employed in, in in your country gambia well as much as we have but well, that is uh, the number is indefinite yes it's indefinite because right now we had only two major hospitals prior to independence but over time we have been able to increase this to five major hospitals what bangladesh can look uh, upon gambia to boost our business and what are the areas bangladesh can march ahead with uh, that business idea gambia has got several uh, uh, basic points where we can uh, add up our values to uh, gambian economy and also we can benefit greatly one is uh, agriculture as uh, his excellency was saying agriculture where we have uh, good farmers we have the experts here and we have the technical know how they have a lot of fertile land mm -hmm. and we have already got some land and we are under process of getting some more land where we can grow rice where we can grow other uh, crops mm -hmm. and can mitigate the local demand and also we can uh, help bangladesh by exporting some of them to bangladesh that is one side the other side is the uh, trade and commerce they import 100% uh, of their medicines from outside mostly from europe and there our pharmaceutical industry can easily get in and export pharmaceuticals to gambia they can have the uh, bangladeshi industries can go and set up their uh, units in gambia and export it using the agua uh, benefits to american market which is duty free access what is that agua can you just uh, this is, elaborate this this is an agreement between the uh, african state and the united states mm -hmm. that the african states goods can enter into the american uh, territory without any duties and taxes where bangladesh can be benefited out of that agua with us uh, this gambia has 
because now out if we are exporting from Bangladesh to the United States, mm -hmm. United States uh, importers are paying a tax in the United States for importing out of Bangladesh. This tax they don't have to pay if they are importing from Gambia. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the facilities that uh, Bangladeshi uh, industrialists that uh, are willing to set up industries in Gambia and enjoy these facilities. And logistically, it is very closer. It's only five hours flight from Gambia to the United States. And the third issue is uh, the port. Gambia has one of the state-of-the-art port and seaport, sea mm -hmm. uh, which is named as Banjul port. Mm -hmm. And this is serving the whole region. But uh, Gambia is a small country, but uh, the user of the port is another six, seven countries. Regional who, countries. Regional countries who are uh, sitting behind Gambia, who are landlocked like uh, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea-Conakry, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Senegal, uh, up to Mauritania. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and all these countries are right now importing and exporting their goods via uh, Banjul port, mm -hmm. where we can really uh, play a bigger role, our shipping industry, our logistical industry, we have a very strong logistical industry. So these are the three parts there. that Bangladesh can look upon? They can very well. Okay, Mr. Badji, uh, can you tell us about the uh, point you were actually describing that uh, employment can be exported to your country from Bangladesh? If we have a technical cooperation agreement between the two countries, hmm. whereby Bangladesh supplies us with doctors and nurses. Hmm. But and what will be their wages? Can, can there be any kind of discrimination like other countries and your country? Because we heard that the West African countries are not that rich like the uh, Western uh, destinations for our manpower we have. So can there be a good kind of salary and wages for the nurses and doctors? Well, if it is at the government level, mm -hmm. that is considered as technical cooperation. Mm -hmm. The wages are retained by Bangladesh and the Gambia retains the accommodation, the transportation, the communication and monthly pocket money of $500 or $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. That is what Gambia can afford under the technical For the doctors agreement. or for the nurses you are talking? This for both the doctors and the nurses. But Bangladeshi doctors are earning a lot at home. Yeah. Then why would they go beyond their territories for the, that kind of a small no, money? Their earnings are retained by the government. Okay. If it is government level, I'm not talking about the okay, private, the private sector. sector. I'm talking about government to government. How about the private sector? The private sector, doctors, once the information reaches the Gambian private clinics and hospitals, mm -hmm. they are in a position to recruit doctors and will put them on very good wages mm -hmm. that they don't have to come down because of going there to come down on their You just earnings. said that you have got only two hospitals now. Five major hospitals. Five major hospitals. Government. Government. That is and government. How about, how, what, is the, what is the numbers in the private sector hospitals? In the private sector hospital, about four. Four? Yes. So five and four, nine major hospitals you have. Yes. <laughs> the smaller is the better. better the smaller is beautiful. Yes, it's beautiful. For example, <laughs> one advantage to the smallness is that we are the highest tourist destination in West Africa. 500 to 800,000 tourists a year mm -hmm. from all over Europe. Now that's a good, that's a good, good uh, amount. Yeah, because of the peace because of the friendliness of the people, because of the infrastructure That we can feel, uh, talking to you, we can yes. feel the warmth and feel yes. and the fair uh, and yes. nice uh, way of talking and having... And opportunities available for safaris, river cruise, mm -hmm. you know, uh, ecotourism, mm -hmm. the African experience. What is the economy size you have in your country? What we are importing more than we are exporting. Okay. It's an import-based country rather. Right. It's an import-based country and therefore... The revenue also is more. So what kind of product Bangladeshi businessmen can export to your country? The one that will be very popular is fabrics or textiles. Okay, what kind of textile we are talking here? Denims or knitwear or oven? What? All of them. All of them. All of them. So all kind of garments popular. can be exported to Gambia. Very popularly. Okay. The, okay. And you have to understand one thing: when we talk about Gambia, the market is always beyond Gambia, because the five six countries around us. They look up to Gambia to get their I things. I believe 15 to 16 countries are situated in the West Africa. 17. 17. Yes. So can Gambia be a gateway for Bangladeshi businessmen to start with? Yes. In fact, because we are already used as the supermarket of West Africa. Mm -hmm. So all the goods come to Gambia and they are exported in the region. Mm -hmm. So this will be a very good opportunity for Bangladesh to position itself for the quantum leaps in you know, bringing in their goods and spreading it in the region. Dr. Haider, can you just tell us that uh, we have got uh, some kind of impediments, bottlenecks or red tapism in exporting or uh, discovering the new areas beyond our thinking, beyond our limited thinking we have. How our government machinery could be helpful in, in discovering uh, countries like Gambia? Our country, our uh, private sectors mm -hmm. are very, very active. One of the best in the earth, I must say. Mm -hmm. What we need only is a policy support. 
we don't need any kind of a big help from the government. We want the policy support from the government. Mm -hmm. Our private sector can play all the roles needed. So all the, any, any policy support will do for the private sector to go and do their uh, investment. Like uh, we are uh, currently struggling with uh, one thing is that uh, our policy doesn't allow us to take the foreign exchange, foreign currency from here to make investment into foreign countries. We, uh, we had a, a meeting last year regarding uh, this agricultural uh, production in different African states uh, with the Honorable Prime Minister, where it was decided that uh, uh, for agricultural purpose, these uh, foreign exchange regulations will be, uh, uh, will be relaxed and will be allowed to uh, take out uh, our money to uh, make investment in terms of agricultural products. I think this is a great opening and mm -hmm. this is a great message for the country's uh, private sector people. What really, is the per capita income uh, for every individual in Gambia? It's around $700. That's fairly good for a developing country, I believe. It is. It yeah. is. It yeah. is uh, quite uh, well. At least uh, double than the Bangladeshis. It is. Mm -hmm. Though the size of the... Uh, as Population uh, is nothing to Bangladesh. It's 160, 65 million uh, we are talking here in Bangladesh, and it's only 1.5 million total, the permanent Gambians, ethnic yes. Gambians. Yes. But there are 1.1 million foreigners living into Gambia because of its They're permanent country. settlers. But we don't have even one Bangladeshis, oh, except okay. Haidaru Zaman. <laughs> so we want more Bangladeshis. But there as is, I, there is a, always a, the first time for uh, everybody. So you have opened the door yes. for Bangladesh. And the Honorable President of the Republic of Gambia uh, mentioned that since we host 1.1 uh, million foreigners, why not? Any amount of Bangladesh is as His Excellency High Commissioner also meant. How much Bangladesh can export to Gambia if Bangladesh is that keen about it? Well, the issue is, uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, that uh, Bangladesh is uh, uh, not only uh, Bangladesh can look at Gambia. The moment you are putting your footstep in Gambian soil. So the possibility mean, is enormous. Yes, the possibility you, you, is you enormous. are putting your uh, footstep into seven other countries. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, and these are all open border and mm -hmm. there is no uh, tax barrier. No, no visa. No, nothing is required for them mm -hmm. to go internally from one country to the other country. It's an ECOS. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the economic uh, community, community of West, of West African, African uh, states. states. So this equals uh, seven, all the 17 countries, they allow their citizens to move around mm -hmm. and their transports. It's like can, the European Union thing. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, this is how they, they, they can, you know, they are using. So we should take the uh, benefit of these facilities. So if you are looking at Gambia itself, is it may not be a very big market. But if you're looking at it as an ECOWAS uh, situation, that's a multi-billion dollars business we are talking about for Bangladesh. And Mr. Bazi, uh, as I learned that you are coming from a power family, rather, your daughter, uh, is, a, is the health minister in Gandhi. your country and five of your brothers are in the same profession diplomacy. Yes. They all are diplomats. So uh, you can play a very key role in developing and boosting up uh, the business initiative from Bangladesh and the other countries you are accredited for. Yes, I mean, this is possible. And uh, let me just give you one example. Mm -hmm. The Gambia imports nearly 300, 350 million dollars a year of rice. Mm -hmm not to talk about the rest of West Africa. And rice is the staple food of not only Gambia, but the whole of West Africa. If Gambia is importing nearly $400 million they worth of rice. They eat rice like Bangladesh. Is yes, more, it's the staple food. More than Bangladesh. And the rest of West Africa is importing huge quantities of rice. Uh -huh. And Bangladesh has the expertise, has the know-how, has the varieties of rice we want. Oh, yeah. So our, just imagine if we, this is possible. The real we don't hero, have to, Mr. High Commissioner, the yes. real hero in our economy is the agro-based uh, farmers we have. We really hope uh, that Bangladesh and Gambia can be strengthening its relation between these two friendly Muslim countries, moderate Muslim countries, I believe, and the business will grow and grow further. And you, Mr. Dembo Bazi, and Dr. M. Haider Zaman, honorary consul here, and you are the High Commissioner designated for Bangladesh, you both can play the pivotal role to boosting it up. Uh, thank you very much for joining me in the show today. Thank you very much, yeah. and uh, thank you, uh, thanks to uh, Channel I.